The Queen's Gambit is a great show, probably one of my favorites. I literally finished it in a night and watched it three more times the same week. But what makes this show so amazing? Some might rightfully say that it's the amazing actors, the incredible writing, or the aesthetically pleasing location they chose, and they would be right. But at the end of the day, what makes the difference between a good and excellent movie is the direction. So let's analyze it and build a frame from The Queen's Gambit. If I were to take a random shot from a random episode of the show, chances are I would find a beautifully constructed frame. They use so many composition technique to make this shot interesting and appealing. For example, they really like to make some really symmetrical shots. This, of course, makes it really appealing to the eye, but that's not it. It also mimics the symmetry of a chessboard and it harmonizes the mathematical and logical perspective of the world. Then, they also use composition to show the power of a character. The more powerful and importance a character has, the biggest it will be on the frame. For example, it often happens that characters are placed on each third of the shots. In this case, you could tweak the placement to change the relationship of power between the characters. For example, if the both characters are at the same height and occupy the same amount of space in their third of the frame, then that means that they are equal in power. It can also express friendship or love. You can also use this composition to make a character look weaker and another one stronger. To do this, you would have to place one of the characters uh, a bit lower than the other one. In this case, we clearly see that Harmon looks smaller and occupies way less space than the janitor. This type of shot will create adversity and a challenge to overcome. Another good example would be this shot, where Harmon is taller than the boys and she has her own third of the frame, while the other uh, third of the frame is shared by three people, which makes it look way more powerful. And as a last example, we could use this shot where Benny is way taller than Harmon. In this case, it doesn't mean he's stronger than her, because he just got beaten by her in the tournament. It just means that he is teaching her something and making her stronger. So he has the upper end in this part of the story. The show also loved to use claustrophobic shots to build up tension. This one, for example, is to create tension because we don't know if Harmon will be able to gather the money to go to Russia. You can easily create claustrophobia in a shot by making a frame inside of the frame. For example, in this shot, the corridor is the frame inside of the frame, making it look like Harmon has nearly no space for herself. The Queen's Gambit is always told from Beth's perspective, meaning that there are a lot of POV over the shoulder shot and shots favoring her perspective. This use of subjectivity makes it way easier to get attached to her, since what we see is literally affected by how she perceives the world and how she feels. Another good example would be this of the shoulder shots. This shot is brilliantly made since it allows us to see Beth, what she's seeing, so her mother, and a physical barrier that prevents them from getting close to each other, the staircase and the piano. The Queen's Gambit love to use close-ups on people's faces, especially during chess match since it helps building the tension. This is enhanced by the beautiful acting of all the actors. And this type of shot is really important to make us connect to the character, since human connection is done through eyes, and we need to see someone's eyes to like them. And this isn't something they overlooked, since many close-ups are focused on a character's eyes, mostly Beth Harmon. And we can notice that Beth has a huge amount of eye white, making it way easier for us to connect to her. Furthermore, as Beth get older, she has wider eyes or her makeups make her eyes stand out more, which makes it even better. On the other hand, Bantic has really small and shady eyes, which makes it harder for the audience to connect him. This makes sense, since at this part of the story, Beltic is the antagonist. Later in the story, when we start to appreciate him, he has a bit wider eyes. We also see a sparkle in his eyes, which makes him seem really human, more than Beth ever was in the majority of the show, 
since we rarely ever see Sparkle in her eyes. This portrays his will to give up on chess. Giving up is a really human action. On the contrary to Beth's action of keep on keeping on going despite she gets more destructive each time. And we can see that at this point of the story, Beth rarely has sparkle in her eyes since her behavior is way more robotic. At some point, we see a tiny spark in her eyes and this is when she starts doubting herself and thinking she will lose. And finally, she has clear sparks in her eyes at the end of the story when she's finally at peace. Last but not least, The Queen's Gambit has stunning and very cinematic visuals. They did this through many techniques, and one that was the most obvious to me was the way they use really soft lighting to light characters' faces. This makes the face way more appealing, easier to look at, and the light looks really natural since the light source are often established in the shot beforehand. For example, we often see lamps or windows in the shots, which makes us understand how the characters are lit up and where this lights come from. Also, like many movies portraying this time period, The Queen's Gambit uses a lot of smoke machines to portray how they used to uh, smoke inside, but also it gives a nice death to the, sh to the shot, and it also allows cool tricks with light. So let's get to work. So the first thing I did is prepare my setup. My living room went from this to this. Then there was this shot I was trying to do uh, with the mirror, with me facing the mirror and seeing myself, but it didn't get the look, quite the look I wanted, so I brought something to elevate my tripod but it still wasn't as good as I wanted reflection in the mirror to be a bit taller than I was but it didn't work so I kind of gave up on this one then I tried to create a claustrophobic shot like we saw earlier so I tried using the carter to make it but it wasn't claustrophobic enough so I put it behind a door to make it even more uh, it ended up Okay, it wasn't so claustrophobic, but it still worked. When I arrived on the actual set, I set it the white balance. After placing my phone in a weird contraption I made, I started to record. I had a bit of difficulty with the light, since I only had a basic lamp to light myself up, and the light from outside. So I tried to use my reflector and diffuser to make it look better, since I had a bit too much shade in my eyes. And this is why I loved to do close-ups on this uh, short film, because it helped me uh, affect the light and affect things without the audience noticing it, while me still being alone. It worked pretty well, and I ended up only using my diffuser and not my uh, reflector. There was this shot that I thought was kind of funny, because in the story there was one character giving his king to the other character, but since it was only me, I couldn't just take it from his end, from my end. And so I needed to make this weird shot to see both of our, of our eyes. Then I did a shit ton of color grading to make my shot look from this to this, and finally to this. I kind of tried to give this red feeling the show has, but I kind of overdid it a lot, um, but it's fine. Then I went to Fusion and I used the Remove Noise tool to remove all the noise that was annoying in the shots. And now we're done, and let's see the result.
So, what are we betting this time? We bet the usual. If I win, you lose all your motivation and all your happiness. And if you win, you're freed. But I doubt this will happen. Why do you hate me like this? I did nothing wrong. I don't hate you. I do this for your own good. You really have no mercy. I won't let you win so easily this time. Why? Why did you... Why did you let me... One. Hold on. Why? You played well. One. I'm free. I did it. I won.